What is good? We're full tripod tonight. Tripod. How's everybody doing? You guys good? Pretty, pretty, pretty good. We're in week eight now of the Just NFL season the here. Well, we're in week nine, I guess. Right. Going into nine. Going into nine here. So we figured good time as any to fire up a little rookie redraft here. Obviously, <laughs> dynasty purposes. Not redraft, but redrafting rookie. the rookies. Uh, going to do a little... Redo. Mostly probably just the first round. Probably not going to get to a second. If we get to a second, maybe there'll be another video that you should be watching. Or maybe we'll just quickly run through some guys that we think should be on there and whatnot. But uh, going to hit that first round because, I mean, let's face it, that's all any of you guys care about anyway. So Top men. Anybody got any uh, anything to share before we get going? You want to air out any grievances? You want to talk any shit? You want to congratulate anybody? Anybody? Everybody? What do you got? Let me just get a subby. Mm. And All a right. noty. Hit that noty. Leave a minty. Mm. It's better than commie. Comment. Leave a comment, please. Got it. <laughs> Didn't know where you were going with that. Yeah, All he right. hasn't been listening to the show, I guess. I, already, I said commie, it didn't play. It doesn't work. You can't shorten comment. Hmm. Right. I didn't listen to last week. I don't know. It was. A, it was. It was. It's been a minute. I haven't it's been, been here since you did the solo pod. Oh. You crushed it. Thanks. I don't know if anybody else realizes that. Monopod. The monopod. I thought you crushed it. <laughs> it was all right. It wasn't the worst ever. You were talking to Brad. You had me bugging out a couple times. Thought it was pretty decent. All right. Well, tripod. Tripod. All right, so we're we're full tripod tonight. Like I said, we're gonna go. Uh, you know, each have a pick and then alternate until we get to uh, pick twelve here, and we'll see how that goes. We'll see how much time it takes. There's zero percent chance we're probably getting a, a round two in this because it's gonna take a minute, I'm sure. Uh, but it's gonna go Big Co, Jay Wayne, then myself, all the way through the round until we get to twelve. So. Leading off in the one-one spot, Big Co. Uh, this is going. We're going to go PPR, non-super flex, tight end premium, um, and may you know chop up a little quarterback action in here, uh, maybe at the end or something. But talk about maybe where they would fit in at the end of this thing, or maybe Not we'll just forget round. about it. And well, I just mean if forget it was super about flex, it. if it was super flex, um, and kind of maybe ranking those quarterbacks or something. But if we have time, <laughs> if we have time, never know. All right, so 1-1 one, one on the clock, Big Co. Who you got? Thanks, Kamish. Um, I'm taking Kyle Pitts. How did you know he was going to take Kyle Pitts before he said Kyle Pitts? Because the Kamish came in there and said uh, they shot the camera in there a little earlier, and you know the guy's already getting congratulated. He's hugging his mom already, standing up, tightening up his jacket, getting ready to go, and then commissioner reads the name out we already knew what was going to happen yeah couldn't have, couldn't have gave you so, the, uh, the opportunity to say yeah. it first that's okay that's okay yeah. i'm a, that's, it's just like this is like real life action here you know it's just yeah. like the commission really did it right they, it's just the, I uh, mean, pro- the pick was the in production a second crew, ago and then the production crew it's just uh it's all good it, tie it in premium uh kyle pitts go ahead and call him the unicorn uh it's just what you know about as cliche as it can get, but the dude turned 21 years old not even a month ago. <laughs> October right? 14th. So he, he's basically still 20. Yeah. Let's be, let's, let's be honest here. He's 20 plus a couple of weeks. Uh, he's just now 21. Um, if this wasn't premium, I could back him down a few spots, but in premium, it's so hard to find a difference maker. Um, he came out slow. The Falcons offense came out slow. Last two out of the last three weeks just erupted with, you know, 26 points, 23 points, and that's not even tight end premium points. I'm just looking at PPR here. And then he put up four, and if he would have gotten me one more catch, I would have beaten you, Big Co. Nice. Oh, nice stat, Jay. Son of a bitch. Um, so, like I said, I mean, I, Kyle I, Pitts, bad pick. Even though he, I lost because of him. One of the little jokes I made about Kyle Pitts when before the, the season started, we were talking about rookies and stuff, was, you know, he'll be 26 when Najee Harris is – you know, old for a running back. Mm-hmm. Um, Najee Harris has done, if, if anything, he's done more than we even thought he could do. He's a RB3 and PPR and points per game right now. He's been an absolute stud. And, you know, Jamar Chase has been an absolute stud too. So you really can't go wrong the first couple picks no matter what. Uh, you got right. premium assets at the top here. Um, it's the way we were talking about it all season long, all off season long. And in pro, tight end premium, 
Um, I probably, uh, I just, I, I, Kyle Pitts is fun. Like right. there's a, like we talk about positional scarcity, like there's some, there's running backs, uh, you know, Josh Jacobs is averaging 15 points per game right now for running backs. And there's 16 of them that's got that's averaging more than him. 16 running backs that's averaging more than Josh Jacobs. He's averaging 15 a game. So obviously Kyle Pitts hasn't won you many weeks. He's only, he, he might've helped you win the two weeks where he blew up, but again, 20 years old out there just being a freak. And when he does start clicking consistently, He's going to help you win, and there's just no – I mean, Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, old Gronk, Waller's been a little bit hot and cold. The whole defense follows him around these days. Um, you know, Hawkinson's been as good as we hoped he could be in the offseason, but, like, you know, the, there's just hard to find a tight end that makes a difference, and it's becoming harder than it is to, than, than to find a running back that makes a difference. There's a, There's been a lot of talent in the league lately for running backs, and there's – not that it's easy to find one, but it's easier than it was a couple of years ago. Um, so I, I'm going with Pitts. Disagree on the running back take, uh, but <laughs> it's hard to find a running back. Yeah. Um, well, I just I, what, I know, but I'm just would, like I'm, in years past, there wasn't 16 running backs averaging 17 running backs averaging 15 points or more. Yeah, I mean, we'll see where we're at come week 16. You know, we're only halfway through the season here, um, so you know, a couple good games can give you that that average of averaging 15 or 16 points uh, a game or a couple of big games anyway. Um, anyway, what I, I guess going back to the why is it so important? Like what's the advantage of taking like why is it so important to get that Kyle Pitts in a tight end premium in this position? Like what's what why is there such advantage? Like can you further explain the advantage of that tight end uh, who can possibly, we're hoping, command the volume, um, well, such if, as like a Kyle Pitts or, or you know one of those other guys that you mentioned earlier about tight ends. Obviously, we, we you know the, a, the age points per reception, the age and and all of that sure. obviously weighs weighs in on this thing. Um, and we know tight ends can typically be well, a position that take a little well, while just, longer. I think but. the age is a reason to not knock him for having not won you so many games. I mean, he's tied in six right now, averaging 12.5 points a game, but that was elevated because of those two monster games. But you're seeing everything from Kyle Pitts that you thought that you would. You're seeing the downfield dominance. You're seeing he hasn't even really gotten loose in, from a yak standpoint. I think right. he's only got 118 yards, which is good for 15th, but crushing – air yards doing it downfield like a monster he's fourth in slot snaps i think i read a snap stat he's only 26 percent of his snaps have been in line so they're utilizing him like you want but you still you have to project in the tight end position well for casey's question about the the why would you what makes him right right what, what elevate right now there's the top three tight ends. It's about the points differential. Like I was right. positional well, and we've, we've explained this a couple of times and we've gone on the rant and some people will say that the tight end premium doesn't matter and it's not that big of a, and it's complete bullshit. Well, um, here's, here's and, why and, but it, I wanted you to maybe give me, since it's your pick, what, what the reason is why, you know, basically when this comes on, it's almost a no brainer. Maybe here to take Kyle Pitts uh, from even just the small sample that we've seen so far, including the age. Sure. Well, the top three tight end, like it, it doesn't matter if you don't have one, if, if you don't have a beast tight end, it doesn't matter. But if you do have a beast tight end, that's when it matters because that's when you start, that's when if you played tight end premium, that's when you start seeing guys walk away in the playoffs picture, right? Like right now, just, it, uh, I, I sorted out. I found me a league tight end premium. Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews, Gronk being carried by the touchdowns, Darren Waller, Hawkinson with the catches. They're they're difference makers, right? So when you have the guys that are just bundled up between 10 points a game and 13 points a game, 14 points a game, like it's just – yeah, those 10-point-a-game guys, are they catch a touchdown and they score you 12. Exactly. They don't, they score you four. Right, right. And so, but like, I mean, right this second, or going six. into week nine, Darren Waller's been completely 
hot in the first week, and then defenses were like, well, we're not. And, and then 14 Output points, 17 standpoint. points, 13 points. You know, it's like, all right, well, we but we know how good Darren Waller can be. Last year he's 100 catches. This this year he's on pace for like 90 catches still, but he's averaging 16 and a half premium points a, a week for uh, for tight ends. Gronk blew up one week, first week crushed it, 33 points. His average is 16, hadn't played in a while. Tight end Mark Andrews and Kelsey, 20 and 18. But can we all agree that the last couple of weeks, Travis Kelsey hadn't felt like Travis Kelsey, the Chiefs hadn't felt like the Chiefs? The first two weeks of the season when the Ch- Travis Kelsey was Travis Kelsey, 28 and 27. That's why you're taking Kyle Pitts. Because when Kyle Pitts, two a couple weeks ago, when or two out of the last three weeks, 31 points, 26 points. Right. Stinker. The Falcons laid an egg. Right. So 31 points, 26 points, the first two out of the last three weeks. When Travis Kelsey and the cat, when we, before we realized the Chiefs were a little bit off this year, 28 points, 27 points the first two weeks, 20 points the next week. And it's when I say he's been a little off, he had an eight point game, an eight point game, but 20, 21, 17. Like you have. Travis Kelsey's not off. The Chiefs are from what we expect. Well, that's what off. I'm saying. Like, exactly. Right. Like, yeah, and he's, he's and averaging he's been, 20 he points a, little, a game and he's a little off. A little injury thing. Darren Waller's been banged up through all of this. Kelsey's PPR tight end premium points are 19.19 per week right now and the chiefs are a little off right that's why you're taking Kyle Pitts more than a little that's why I'm taking Kyle Pitts at 1-1 because in the in a premium because not only is he 20 years old not only is he the highest tight end ever drafted not not only is he on pace right now after the first three or four weeks of doing hardly anything to still lead the league in the the for the most tight most reception yards by a tight end in the history of the game in his rookie season all those things he's still you know he's it's just a stud he's a stud and we've already seen it only took six weeks to get we see that stud right he's already got two top-notch high-end all pro type games under his belt out of the first seven yeah so in his career to further expand on casey's question right if you go back historically and look at the last several years of waller and kelsey scoring them boys are like they score more than all the other wide receivers. Basically. Exactly. We right. talked about that in the offseason. Right. That's kind of what I was getting at is, is, is when you get the hot, when it's the high volume players and Kittle's a little bit of an outlier because he can get some volume um, and he can crush yards. He doesn't quite get the volume that those other guys get, um, but he's, he's a really good player. So, you know, he's always up there in the conversation. He's a yak monster. Um, but their target's worth 1.5. So when you get the guys who can get the big volume, like Devontae Adams missed some games last year, but it was still like the wide receiver one, and Darren Waller was right there on his heels, just a few points behind him. Right. That's the tight end position that he's crushing in your lineup every week, and he's slaughtering every other wide receiver out there right. every week. Right. That's the difference between having one of and, and you know, if you miss on them, fine. It punt, doesn't matter. Go, go after down the, or after the first it, couple. You know, we're we think that Hawkinson can be good, just not in a great situation. And even when they're commanding, when he can command the targets, they're not great targets because he's even said after the first couple of weeks, basically everybody's just keying on what he's doing yep. and trying to make sure he doesn't beat you. Waller kind of a similar deal right now, but Waller's also been banged up. Waller also isn't. 21 years old coming into the league Waller was fucking up and then mm-hmm. came back into the league at like 26 and had to work his way. Travis Kelsey didn't explode onto the scene right. until real, like he was always pretty good, but until Patrick Mahomes came along, Kyle Pitts is coming in here at 21 20. looking like he's coming, looking like he is right now, right. basically. And, and we're all, we're just now really seeing like there's been historical tight ends and Shannon Sharps and right. uh, th- those kind of unicorn guys. But now we're seeing the, the the NFL and, and schemes really take advantage how and basically using them as a hybrid wide receiver and really valuing that position. So that's why, where the guy like Kyle Pitts in this situation to me. Yeah. I'm not going to argue with you if you want to take Jamar Chase or Najee Harris here, but like in a tight end premium scenario, if, if, if this guy hits and, and can be uh, half of what we even really think he's going to be, then he's worth that all day long. And like, you shouldn't, it's, it's going to be impossible to get him, um and tight end premium probably next year yeah and tight end premium next year he's probably going to be a top five pick right in a startup right. and if he's not coming shoot. out at 20 you already can't get him right I mean, you, you can't already, trade for him you, you never could you yeah. couldn't ever get him no 
Right. I, I, I stole him in one one league. I got Kyle Pitts, and I'm he'll die on my team for right. sure. No exactly. one's gonna get him. Exactly. They can't. You can get a guy, and and, get and all like you you said. You know, every year that certain position groups kind of go up and down point total wise. Like mm-hmm. some week, some years the running backs, the top end running backs, just slay it and nobody touches them. Other years it's kind of a little closer. The tight end position right now as a whole just seems maybe down from where we were talking about where Waller and Kelsey were last year. But like when they're rolling and when they're doing what they're doing, and again, they're 29 and 31 where Kyle Pitts is 21. Exactly. Um, you know, it's you're, you're getting you're winning the tight end position and you're beating somebody's best wide receiver. Like it's just it's crazy. Like so that when it's premium and you get the volume, which it's is Kyle Pitts is, is the on offense. Arthur Smith, you know, getting just first little his mitts on this guy and just figuring out how to use him um and they're going to grow together and i think i think that's a great pick and i think well just to clarify something i said earlier that i rebuttaled against you i just scrolled back to 2020 scores and 2019 scores and it is pretty normal to have 14 15 points a game deep in the running back sector um like you said so i thought that was a little bit high for this year Josh Jacobs was 15 points a game in 2019, and that took him down to slot 15 with 14 running backs over him. Yeah. Um, so, but the point of that being, if you start in a two running back league, 12 teams, that's 24 running backs. By the time you get down to 24, it drops down to 12 points per game. Right. And then, you but, know. And then the difference between the top five guys. Exactly. Yes. Six. Which, and the next make the running back position so much more valuable, but not necessarily in tight end premium when you can get a guy who's going to be the top wide receiver in your tight end. Spot. Yeah, I mean, there's – so Right. Agreed. So, yeah, it's a good pick, tight end premium. If it wasn't tight end premium, I probably would move Pitts back maybe one or two spots. One or two spots, yeah. Uh, pick your poison. Whatever. Yeah, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong in the top three at all, but I'm going Pitts premium. All right. Well, let's hit one, two. I have the one, two, so I know who I'm taking. <laughs> Jamar Chase. It wasn't super easy to make that pick. I definitely could have gone with Harris, but I went I went Jamar Chase. He's been tearing it up since day one. He's wide receiver three on the year, 19.9 PPR points a game. That's good for fifth. 60 targets and 38 receptions. That's nothing crazy, comparatively speaking, but 786 yards, which is third, and seven tooties. That's fourth. That's good for fourth. Uh, and he just, he looks like a monster. He's only like 201 pounds, but he looks yoked up. And when he has the ball in his hands, he looks bigger and faster than anyone trying to tackle him. It's clear the year off didn't affect him at all. Him and Burrow have pretty much picked up right back where they left off in 2019. Uh, you know, he tried to give us the huckle buck with the drop season, the preseason, but that's not an issue. Although I think he does have four drops, which is tied for uh, 12th most with 13 other players. Um, but I, you know, you can't go wrong if you want to take Najee. I, if I, I think Casey said it best. We were talking about it offline. It was like if I had two rookie drafts, one of them I take Chase and one of them I take Najee. Like I, mm-hmm. I, would, I, I want, I want both of them. Um, but I guess the bottom line for me going Chase over Najee in this instance was that he's he's tied to Burrow forever, and the Steelers don't know what's going to happen there long term they'll probably be just fine uh they are a good organization if Tomlin sticks around he's a great coach they actually have like the 12th most cap next year in 22 so with like 49 million they're about to get one of these big quarterbacks so yeah they can probably they about to get next get, year they ain't gonna be they got they're gonna have rogers or wilson mm-hmm. or who's in their third one or watson they're going to have one of those guys. Probably Watson kind of seems like he wants to stay south, but um, they uh, they'll have a good chance they got Rodgers or Wilson for sure. So, but I went Chase. Yeah, That's I mean, doing. I don't think you can go wrong taking Jamar Chase or Najee Harris. You know, people are going to say you can. You know, you're going to get this. I'll have him for ten years. You're going to get this receiver for ten years, which is you know, it's completely understandable. There's which we're we're working on a, a show to kind of debunk the whole ten year thing. Like, just go back, go back and look at ADP from previous years and look at the list of wide receivers that have gotten hurt and are no longer relevant on your team. Or like, just aren't that high up? And, it's and a crapshoot. Like picks. Yeah. 
Get the running back you know is a stud. Not an issue, but but Jamar Chase has looked good. There's there's I'm I'm not upset which, whichever way you want to go. Like you said, I, I could I, if I did 50 drafts, I I got no problem splitting it 25 25. Um, I'm always <laughs> don't do a, 50 in don't a rookie do 50, draft. Twenty dollar leagues. That's everyone on Twitter has 50 20 dollar leagues. Get you a couple hundred dollar, hundred hundred fifty, two fifty. <laughs> go crazy. Spend some money. Go crazy. Uh, he he's he's Jamar Chase is very good. Uh, Potentially a difference maker. Burrow's good. It seems like the offense is is Zach Taylor has this offense kind of moving in the right direction. They have three options. I'm not going to say that you know T Higgins and and Tyler Boyd are necessarily going to cap him from being awesome, but like maybe it hurts him a little bit to go like completely sky high because they do have you know some other and Joe Mixon. They do have some all some really good options all across the board here where you see. If his targets were up in a, in a, at a crazy level, um, are you saying the efficiency can't last? Is that what you're trying? He's got to regress to the mean. Is that what you, right? Uh, I mean, and his targets I are disagree. still his targets are still really good. Two catches good. and he could have your ceiling for sure, for sure. But like two catches, you have. That, I guess I guess that's the only the only thing that I would try to maybe make an argument against is maybe that that that, that the whole ecosystem seems to be pretty fucking strong there. Mm-hmm. Um, that maybe could cap him from just being like just absolutely absurd always um where you know but but really at the end of the day who the fuck is um like it's yeah. really hard to be absolutely awesome I'm, I'm just nitpicking at this point and jamar chase is has been absolutely uh outstanding on 38 receptions basically uh, i mean so that's that's pretty fucking strong. It's twenty third most right. receptions. Well, he has that R most yards. He has that R beside his name that denotes rookie, and the only other R in the top thirty two is all the way at the bottom with Jalen Waddle. Yeah, so that'll show you how good he's playing as a rookie. Yeah, so and I mean wide receivers exactly. Right. You just you just have it built in where where Burrow is obviously at this point nobody can say that Burrow isn't a better quarterback than Tua, um, and Tua has been out and hurt, and that's the difference. Like if Tua was maybe as good as we thought he would be and not hurt, maybe Jalen Waddle would be right up there with uh, with a Joe with with um, Jamar Jamar Chase here um, because he certainly has the talent to be, and we've seen it in in certain games. Mm-hmm. Um, and just who expected the Bengals to be as good as they are right now? Not uh, them, because they took a week off to party. Just <laughs> ask the Jets. Yeah. After they be after they handled the Ravens, they were like, "Wow, we haven't done that in ten years. Let's take a week off, go on vacation." <laughs> Mike but White beat them. <laughs> it's fantastic. I'm, I was nitpicking to just find some reason to maybe be like, "All right, let's take a backseat to Jamar Chase." But I mean. Sure. If you want to take Jamar Chase, take Jamar Chase over Najee Harris. I'm not going to argue with you. All right. All right. I'm up. Uh, I'm going to take, obviously, Najee Harris here. Um, pretty easy pick. This, He's on the field. He's on the field a ton. He's getting a ton of usage. The receptions are out of control with him. It's everything you want it to be. Um, it's been better. Like I said before, it's been better. What's been better? Him. It's been better than, than oh, what right. he's been, it's been better. better. Than what- He's t- averaging 20 points a game. And that's just kind of how awesome Jamar Chase and the, you know, the tight end premium and fun, and like how much fun Kyle Pitts is. Like Najee Harris was our 1-1, one, one, and he's done nothing but be better. And Jamar Chase, like you said, is a coin flip. He could easily have been the two. Kyle Pitts could be the 1-3 here in any draft, even though in all the rookie drafts in FFPC, he was the 1-2 in almost every one of them. But that was Najee Harris being picked over him. Right. You know? Um, Harris has been an absolute stud. Yeah, and, and and almost any rookie draft, always at the top where there's those elite players, I'm almost always going to give the nod to the running back because look at all the receivers in the league. Right. Every team has two or three good receivers, and at, you know every week is hard. I mean, fucking Cooper Cup is the number one receiver in the league right now. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, who in the fucking world thought that that was going to happen? Like, he's on pace to just smash records. Mm-hmm. Like, who in, who we talk about it all the time? A quarterback change can affect uh, a favorite wide receiver and targets and and who's getting the play, and it, it clearly has here. But like, in what world did you think that 
that this was going to happen, you didn't. And there's just, you know, a long list of really, really good receivers in the league. And it's just a position that keeps getting stronger and stronger. Whereas running back, yeah, it does seem to get stronger here and there, but it, it goes up and down and the, and the shelf life can be a little shorter, but it's really hard to win in this league without a running back. It's next to impossible to trade for a really good running back. Right. And the and rookie draft league- is the spot where you get to try to replenish the stock for a couple of years uh, of of trying to get a window open to make a run here when you hit it with a guy like a Jonathan Taylor or a Najee Harris. Right. In your league and the messages come through and people are got players up for sale, who what position group are they looking to trade for? Running backs. I need a running Every back. single I need a running time. back. Yep. Right. You can find a receiver and, and people get down on running backs, especially if they're, you know, seeming to, to be a couple of years in and, and just has fallen out of public favor for whatever. So maybe you can find a guy who's just being disrespected, which is what you're trying to do with that at any position. Um, but like you guys said, the Steelers are a good organization. Tomlin says he's clearly not going anywhere. Regardless if they get one of those top couple of guys, there's probably going to be some other veterans that they're going to go after and find a reliable replacement to play quarterback we're not they've they've, Tomlin has basically come out and said that they want a veteran quarterback next year moving forward um and you know even if it's Jimmy G like right fine that's fine Derek Carr Tomlin Tomlin's been he's they've been winning too long Tomlin ain't trying to just sit around and rebuild right Tomlin ain't gonna he's not like well I don't need two three and 13 seasons in a row you got Three the, and 14 now. You got this offensive line. They invested in a running back. They're feeding the shit out of it. They're doing what they said. They're feeding the hell out of the running back. They're Fourth now, carries. Maybe you lose a little check down Roethlisberger if you get a new quarterback in there, which is fine. Yep. This, he's playing like 80% of the snaps. His snap share is insane. That's he's, how um, Tomlin does it. And he's third in slot snaps and, and that's ex- second in routes run. That's exactly what they wanted to do and said they wanted to do. And here we have Najee Harris, a guy who can handle it and the receptions are out of control, like I said. And then this offensive line has been making baby steps week in week out and by the end of the season it might not be such the worst offensive line we've ever seen and then all of a sudden in two or three years you're like damn the Steelers got this sick offensive line again that they had when Le'Veon Bell was in his prime and they were like they this, and the, the O-line is so sick and the Steelers organization is so strong and fifth just, year option on Harris right they got they got Harris for four more years they just wiped the slate clean with the offensive line they brought a bunch of new guys in they're gelling they're figuring it out they had a problem it couldn't get any worse than it was which is we said that multiple times and Najee Harris has still been good with that uh, so I'm um, I'm over the moon about your your Najee Harris pick, um, and I'm I'm stoked I got him here at three. Um, probably would have taken him over Jamar Chase, uh, but again, can't argue with you. So, anybody got anything else? No, I mean he's incredible. I mean if you if you want to say maybe he doesn't have maybe he's not second in receptions and targets if Roethlisberger's not there, it's not going to be that much lower. And he's still he's fourth in carries, right? So it's like. What more could you want? Right, yeah. and his, he's been like I said, the offensive line been getting better. He's he's been getting better. He has, uh, like you said, with Jamar Chase, he's also got an R next to his name. Like, mm-hmm. He's figuring this shit out. Mm-hmm. Um, and he figured it out when you put the then you you know you all off season and just one more little thing that that just really puts a big check mark for me is the kind of human that he is and the kind of want and desire that he has to be in the building, learn as much as he can, and continue to get better. And, you know, some of these guys, as we get down the line, one in particular, like the only thing that could hold some of these guys back is themselves. And, you know, that's not going to be a problem with Najee Harris. Love it. All right. Big Co. One, four. Uh, Jalen Waddle jumps up the list here. All right. Climbs up. Uh, you know, hit it. Who knows what happens with the Dolphins <laughs> and Tua. But right now you can see that the Dolphins want to feed Waddle. And for me, Tua obviously, does, for sure, Tua does. And even if they, even if it's not Tua next year, this is still the Waddle that was drafted, and that they gave up a first round pick to move up in the first round. So they got a ton invested in Waddle. Um, and given the way they've been using him, they, uh, you know, they haven't even been giving him the bombs. Like this is all just short, force him, force him to rock, force him to targets receptions ppr points like crazy he's made a couple of short area touchdowns that have looked good but if 
there's a quarterback upgrade to be had. Maybe he doesn't get quite, you know, I mean, 14 targets a game sometime. Maybe he doesn't do that. But if you open up the uh, top end of his game, then, you know, that. Like, I just think – to me, at one four, this this was me kind of like I I don't I didn't think you guys were looking at Waddle this high. Obviously, um, I was like if I I like Waddle here, it's a good safe value, and I'll get Waddle get out of the way and see who you guys were gonna pick next. Kind of it was almost just like a test, um, instead of sticking with some of the uh you know stock answers. Um, so I like Waddle here. Um, I could be talked in or out of Waddle necessarily if there's another player to be had right here at one and four with the top three biggest studs gone but I felt like it was a good good safe value grab yeah I mean I I don't think there's plenty of people who would argue that he's the wide receiver two in this class so far and 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 looking like it and that he's not uh, that he is that he is the wide receiver two plenty people would argue that, right okay um and that he's you know like you said you haven't I don't. Th- I don't know that it's necessarily a two a problem. It just seems like a, an offensive problem that they're not. They haven't. You haven't even seen um, the, the 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 really the yak explosion and the and the right. explosive plays from Waddle. You've seen a couple of times where he's exited with that ankle. So, um, but he he's come back. Um, so that was a little troublesome spot for him. But he's played, gutted through it, whatever those problems were, and and has been very very strong. Again, probably would have taken a running back here, um, but I, I can't necessarily make too big of a case to say not to take Jalen Waddell. He's, he's, we told you last week or two weeks ago to, that you should definitely be going to try to buy Jalen Waddell right now. He looks borderline unguardable, and that's what you want to see. And as whether it's Tua or <laughs> worst-case scenario, best-case scenario, it's Deshaun Watson. So, I mean, mm-hmm. if Tua's going to feed him and then right. if you get Deshaun Watson, he, great. Right, maybe so. maybe now you see him getting hit on a deep crosser wide open. Right, that'd be nice. I haven't seen him get, I haven't seen him catch the ball wide open too much. You know, he hasn't gotten loose. There's no he, space to be had. Boy, right be getting now, that separation though. But he gets the targets, and if you give me space and that type of speed, that'd be awesome too. Yeah, I mean, I can't argue against it. I don't think I would do it. I think sitting at one five, I was pretty pumped to get who fell to me um and you know we'll, we'll get to that in a sec but uh waddle's been pretty incredible uh you know like we said we we just told you to go buy for him and and he's getting pumped with volume and he looks like he did in college he looks he looks he looks electric and quick and fast and he's getting open and what more could you want and he, he's a young dude already putting up points and borderline starting for you there for a stretch you had to get him in now you know mm-hmm. you're not really sure but don't have to he wasn't you're not leaning on waddle anyway but right you know a decent pick i can't i can't i'm i'm not mad at it i can't i can't argue against it uh i'm gonna take someone else anybody else no let's go to All pick right. five one five travis Etienne, baby <laughs> who thought it was gonna be anybody else <laughs> had to yeah, I mean, I'll still take him over. I'll still take him over uh, Javante, and maybe maybe Waddle's a safer pick at this point. Um, it's just returning from the injury. I mean, obviously, if he's not hurt, who knows what's happened to I me? Mean, there's only so many spots in the top three, but who knows what's tr- Etienne's doing if he's not hurt? But then the type of injury wasn't it? Was an a- it's a Liz Frank, so it's not. It's pretty rare. Uh, there's not a ton of data on it. Um, especially running backs. I remember Pierre Garçon had it for a little while. He didn't. He elected not to do surgery. Came back and had another four or five productive years uh, playing the wide receiver position. I can't really think of any other – I can't think of too many Liz Frank injuries. Um, but I know Travis Etienne is like one of the most humble, hardworking dudes to come through Clemson. And so if anybody can rehab and come back from an injury, it's him. And then I just, you know, sticking with my evaluation of him with – just the balance, the power, the torque, the the body lean, the electricity. He just straight shitted on everyone he ever played. And, you know, he got better and better each year from a receiving standpoint. Started off with five catches his rookie, fr- freshman year, got 12 the next, 37, and ended with 48 catches his final year at Clemson for a total of 102. 
And, you know, something I don't think he gets enough credit for. Everyone wanted to say Javante. You got to take Javante because his body profiled as a workhorse running back. Travis Etienne weighed in at his pro day at 215 pounds. Like, he came into Clemson 190. And so he's just put on weight and then still ran a 4-4. So, like, 215 is everything you could want from your weight in an NFL running back to handle whatever it is. And, you know, he he handled the rock way more than Javante Williams did in college, caught way more balls than Javante Williams. And I'm not trying to talk anything bad about Javante. I think he's a great trade for target right now, and I'm down to take him, and he's coming up soon. But, man, if I could go – if I could – if someone offered me a trade package with either ETN or Javante, like I'm taking the ETN package. And if I'm in a rebuilding state, I'm going to try and go get ETN from somebody if, if I can, if they're down on the injury or, you know, I don't know. Uh, people get just impatient. And uh, there's definitely an open window here. And I was, I was excited to take Travis ETN, baby. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, if – He's going to be missing a whole year and and coming back. And he was they stayed in college a year longer. He's old older like Najee, so you know that's that's going to be a, a red flag and a fifth year for option. Him. Um, but man, the Jaguars need a player like but him right yeah, now. Yeah, I was just just, dying just for a it seems like they had like like Urban had had a big plan for him. You saw Week One where uh, James Robinson they, like he seemed like he had to be like, oh yeah, I need to I need to lean on James Robinson here. It seemed like he, Week One he was like kind of surprised that it's like. Oh yeah, I still don't have Travis Etienne here. I need to. I need to go ahead and then he kind of readjusted as things went on and started leaning more and more on James Robinson. Whereas it seemed like Travis Etienne would have a nice little role carved out on this team again, just like the Burrows and and the two was he he would have had a guy he was super familiar with, and I think that would have helped him uh, with some growing pains. And you know, you've seen the maturity of him get smarter and smarter every week. Um, and I think I think Etienne would have been a really nice safe blanket for him. And, you know, I think there was there was going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of pass catching opportunity uh, with a lot of, you know, short things to turn into big things for Travis Etienne. And, and you know, I was I was excited to see a, a, a Kamara type role for Travis Etienne in this offense. And, and I think that's what it will be and can be. And I think he's really good. I like sticking to the eval. Um, so I probably would have bumped him up a spot, too. So uh, definitely a big opportunity uh, for the dynasty players going into next year. Um, especially in like a startup, right? Huge um, discount. You'll see his huge name value. will get lost in all the names in a startup. It's probably um, a little bit more difficult to go straight up grab him from the guy who wanted him enough to take him in the rookie draft. So in your existing leagues, you'd have to pay a higher price. I haven't been able comparatively. to trade for him yet. Exactly. Exactly. I've tried. Exactly. I uh, know we have on our on the team that we have together. We tried to go out and get him in a package and. Um, in case he really broke down some good meat and potatoes trade talk of a couple of weeks back about how to go act and you know go buy trade, the IR players. So trade for guys that the, aren't going to take points out of the exactly. guy who's competing his lineup. Um, but next year going into the startup season, I think you'd be able to get um, a really good fair value on the ETN and still have um, the upside for his Kamara type abilities and role. And if it doesn't work out. Then, you know, say if he's got, I just did spent, you know, the first five minutes while you guys were talking, lead, reading up on some Liz Frank stuff, you know, if he develops some serious uh, arthritis and he's not the running back he used to be, you're not paying what you had to pay in this past. If you had an early rookie draft, you had to pay a lot. If you had a late rookie draft, maybe he had already been hurt potentially if you had that late. Like we had a home league where it was a little bit later and he had already been hurt. But in the rook, in the startups, I think you should be able to feel good about your investment whether you know just saying hey i'm taking the stab here not exactly even sure where i'm gonna just throw a round out in my head right this second but when you're saying hey i'm gonna take this i could have this player here but if i get travis Etienne, if he makes it then i'm crushing and if he doesn't if it you know if he has lingering effects and it doesn't come back mm-hmm. then what i gave up is not you know it's right. worth it's worth the risk yeah all right fair enough you guys ready to keep moving? Sure. Sure. All right. So I'm up at one six. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the last running back uh, from the big guys to start this whole thing off, and I'm gonna take Javante Williams. Um, kind of similar, almost like what you were just talking about. There, there, there. I think there's some value to be had on Javante because he hasn't really 
I guess he could technically be in your starting lineup if you really need him to be, but he's not necessarily cracking that every week and being like a must start. Melvin Gordon's showing, you know, a little life and they're they're using him. Um and he's he's keeping Javante from really being a, a workhorse, but um somebody that I've also been trying to go get because I do like what I'm seeing from Javante Williams. He looks explosive, he looks pretty solid. He looks you know, he's forcing ta- forcing missed tackles and forcing broken tackles. Um, and looking pretty strong or, or he's, you know, not being effective at all. Those are kind of, seem to be like the two, uh, things of, of kind of how Javante Williams works, but that's kind of the running back position as a whole. Um, yeah. so well, it, it'll be interesting to see how the season ends for Javante Williams and how these back eight games go. Um, because he could be a guy who you could get some good value on if I think if it kind of stays like this, there'll probably be some fanboys still who who elevate the value a little bit, but he could stay a little bit back from where he is. Or if he comes in and is a league winner, he might be overdrafted and overvalued. Mm-hmm. And not to say that he won't end up being worth it, but it will be because really at the end of the day, this comes down to value of players and where I think they should go, whether it's not whether or not I like the guy, like I like the guy, but maybe it's going to be too much. And I'm, I just don't know. I'm not, he comes in and is a league winner. And then all of a sudden gets elevated to a spot where I don't quite think he's worth the value. And I like the value of some other guys around him a little better. Um, I, I could just really see that happening. And, and, and have we seen Javante Williams ever in his career, which, Maybe not the best reason to hate on. I'm not hating, or but maybe not the best reason to be like I can't just jump right on it if he does have a nice, you know, run down the stretches. Is when, when have you seen him be the guy? Mm-hmm. It hasn't most, happened. The most carries he ever had in a season in college was 167. Um, he did now, have 25 catches that year. This is the NFL, and most teams are leaning that way. The guys who are really elevated are the guys who don't. Um, and, and, and have the skill. I'm not saying he doesn't have the skill. He doesn't have, certainly has the body type. Right. Um, but we Next haven't, linebacker. we haven't quite seen it. And I, I think if he got We're elevated projecting. too high, I could be like, eh, maybe I might take it, take, take a, a, another wait a year approach on Javante before I want to pay that high price on him. But I do really like him. And, and right now I'd be, be trying to target him. And I, you know, again, I really like what I've seen from him. Melvin's probably going to be out of there who maybe Denver ends up with one of those high, high uh, profile quarterbacks as well. They've been kind of always in the mix of, right, of right. Aaron Rodgers. So mm-hmm. uh, we shall see. And that would be a huge boost uh, to Javante Williams. But again, will he be a guy who has the backfield by himself and will he dominate a backfield by himself? Um, he's very good. He's been strong with Michael Carter and strong with, with Melvin Gordon. Um, so time will tell, but again, not hating on him. I really like the guy, but I, I would take him after um, these other running backs still. I agree. Fair enough. <laughs> Anyone want to take Devonte over? Devonta Smith? Devonta over Javante. Uh, Seems like maybe a high, but it's the running back. You know, it's a running back show. At least well, it used if, to be. If you're... You got to you project in both ways now. So if if, if Jalen Hurts is going to be the starter again next year, Mm-mm. I'll take Javante nah, Williams. Not. Yeah. If and if even if Jalen Hurts isn't the starter, if you got the same coach with the same type of lack of skills to draw up an offense, I mean, I don't want anything to do with the passing game for the Eagles right now. I don't want anything to do with anybody but the running back quarterback for fantasy the jury's points. Still out on the Sirianni, but I think well, that's what I'm, I mean. If you take Devonta Smith and you but, put him I mean, on a team who's scheming up open wide receivers, he could completely look different. I mean, he's he's there's nothing wrong with Devonta William. I mean, Devonta Smith. <laughs> it's just and there's pro, I mean, there's nothing wrong with Javante Williams either. Like Casey was saying, he's just running under the radar right now for most people. He's got he had a 17 point game. But he's averaging ten points a week, so like there's a ton of eights and fives and nines in here, and he he's has just a, not getting much volume. He's literally splitting. And the carries, quarterback is, Melvin, you know, Melvin. it's just they don't have the offense. Like if they got an Aaron Rodgers, the offense would be doubled. You know, they don't have the offense to carry two running backs to fantasy stardom. So, you know, is it just the running back case? What's that? It's just the running back position. Is that why For, you're going Javante over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I would, I would knock. Uh, Jalen Waddle and Devontae Smith uh, back in rookie drafts and take take ETN Harris Williams 
uh, yeah, sure. Ch Chase is in there because Chase has shown me that he could be, uh, he's a big dog and he has to eat. Um, <laughs> but, um, I mean, if you want to just move on to the next pick here, um, let's do it. What is it? One seven. Yeah. It's Devonta Smith. Um, I would, I'm still going to take the running backs in a, in a rookie draft and, and in, and in a real draft for the most part, there are again, outliers like Jamar chase that make me say this guy is a really good value and a good player. So uh, I'll take him. Um, but yes, it's the running back position. Uh, big Co, your pick. Who'd you sure. take? <laughs> Had to go with Devonta Smith. Had to, um, you know, there's, you get, you get little snapshots, you know, you get snapshot. Devonta Smith catches the ball on the sideline or he shows himself to oh, be he's a the wizard, man. He's, he's still the same Devonta Smith that we thought he reaper. was, you know, he's the slim he's reaper. Elegant, you, smooth, you, fast. I love, I love those videos of people, you know, cutting up his, um, the, the way he comes off the line of scrimmage. Like nobody can get his hands on him. Nobody, and he's so small. It's too small. I can't be that small. Nobody, it doesn't fucking matter. You can't touch him. Nobody can get his hand their hands on him. It's just right now there is no precision pass game in Philadelphia. Mm -mm. There's no precision. There's no this the X's and O's are underwhelming. Um, Miles Sanders goes out. They finally run the ball. They're not all right. They're not helping themselves pretty much in any facet of the game right now. They're kind of like tying their shoes together. So it's aggravating, but you have to take those spots and just look and see, you know, like I, I would have no problem taking Javante Williams, but I would have no problem just being like, yeah, I'm going to get Devonta Smith and just know and take some of the question marks. I don't think there's many question marks out of Javante Williams. It's just, you know, I haven't seen the Broncos play a lot of football good this year. And when I have, it's just, it's a watered down offense right now. They're probably going to get a new coach, probably going to get a whole new system coming in, probably going to get a new quarterback. And who knows what's happening with those guys. The Eagles are on That's their all way. That's probably to, good. And, uh, yeah, yeah, probably, and, I'm uh, sure. They're going to be out of there. They're not hiring another defensive coach. That's not happening. You go defense to offense to maybe defense again, probably offense again. You're not going bad experience with a good – we see this all the time. What's the – um? What's the dude's name that was the uh, Falcons defense, the Falcons head coach? Now he's a defensive coordinator Dan for the Cowboys. Quinn. He's a stud. He's a stud coordinator. defensive coordinator. Get coordinator. And the race. Falcons went Fangio to the is Super like the best defensive coordinator. In the the league. Falcons went to the Falcons had the best team in the league when Dan Quinn was their coach, and they had Kyle Shanahan. So Dan Quinn probably didn't even have to talk to the offensive players. He did his thing on defense. Shanahan leaves. Now Dan Quinn's trying to do everything. Like there's just Vic Fangio is probably a top two defensive coordinator in the league he was so good he got a head coaching job this happens all the time so it's going to be a reset for the broncos and i've philly's i mean philly's philly so they're already calling for a new coach but they really could be one and done with this guy and unless something unless he has a good back half of the season but it's just I'm still – I mean, I'll take – I'll be happy to get Devonta Smith. That's pretty much where he was anyway just because there are so many studs in this draft. Like, it's, you know, you've, a couple running backs, a couple stud receivers, and a Kyle Pitts. Devonta Smith was probably the, the one six, one seven, one eight anyway. So he's still right here in the exact same spot. Still happy to have my Devonta Smith. Yeah, I would I, – I think I would – I might be in the minority here. I'd probably still take Devonta Smith over Jalen Waddell. I just like the prospect better. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay on the eval – he hasn't gotten a fair shake yet to, to really see what he can do if he was properly uh, schemed, targeted, thrown to, uh, all those kind of things. I thought that maybe that he would be a target hog and be able to, but in this offense, because who the hell else could they throw to? But Jalen Hurts has, has not shown me that he can um, play well. Or, yeah. Can, well, can, 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 orchestrate an there offense is no in system. a winning can, fashion. Can, right. Can orchestrate an, a, an offense and, and really elevate the play of his receivers um, and the, the head coach situation, you know, could possibly be over his skis as well. So it's just a bad combo platter. Maybe they just hired him to kind of be the fall guy anyway. <laughs> was basically like, hey, we're going to give you Jalen Hurts in this and we got all these picks coming into next year and hopefully we're just bad and we can get a, yeah. have our pick be good and we'll just clean house next year. Yeah. And yeah. you you and Hurts can, you know, go by the wayside. Definitely um, maybe. I mean, there's but there's been times where you do see the brilliance of Devonta Smith and it's fucking awesome. So, you know, I, I thought there would be a little bit more upside to him this year. I, week one, there was. And then, 
you know, a couple games went by and you didn't see him. And then he had two back to back games of 19 and and 14.7. And then it's been, you know, five, 11 and two. So, I mean, imagine Devonta Smith on the Rams, right? Imagine thinking. obviously they weren't in there because they spent all their picks for the. Well, they don't have picks for seventeen more years now. They, don't even want to they just gave them away for Von Miller. Yep. They're but I mean you know just imagine Devontae well, I mean, Smith the way. on an open offense with a quarterback who's got the defense that had the defense has to guard sixty yards deep right and left. Right. You know it's basically the Saints' offense on steroids. Like they what you wanted Drew Drew Brees made you guard everybody right to left, but he could only make you guard 35 yards downfield. Mm-hmm. Even the younger Drew Brees could make you guard 40 yards downfield. Matt Stafford can make you draw, guard 60 yards downfield. You don't know where to be. And imagine like a Devon, imagine a gazelle like Devonta Smith in an offense like that. He's just like anywhere. This, imagine, just imagine him anywhere. With any quarterback that can throw the ball. <laughs> that, well, I mean, but I mean, th- that's, it's just, it's not, it's not, that's not fair, Jay. Like if, <laughs> Like, it's remember how much fanfare the Ravens got as an organization of what they did in Circle the Wagons around Lamar Jackson and the way they set up his offense and the way it – like, they. this is the opposite of what's going on with the Eagles right now. Like, Hurts could look so much better if – He was in the Ravens? If he was playing – yeah, if he just put on a purple and white jersey and subbed in for Lamar Jackson, he would look so much – there's just a difference in franchises right now. The Eagles are – in just in shambles, and the Ravens are just always the top five. Yeah, team. we don't have time for this yeah. argument right now. Jalen Hurts has looked like dog shit I'm throwing not giving the football the and reading a defense out. right now. It's he should he should be afforded more time. He's not going to get that time, and he may get another opportunity. But he does not look like an NFL quarterback. Well, that's right what now. I just said. There's no. But it's they not, didn't ask Lamar Jackson to read a defense fault. to get started. Right, but he's also but not they're Lamar doing that, Jackson. But they're they're right. at they're throwing yeah. him out there to the he's wolves. He's like Cam Newton, but can't throw it. I mean, all right, we don't have enough time for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to touch the Cam Newton thing, but he's not. Lamar Jackson is just. In terms of, he's not Lamar J. He's not the twitchy, ridiculous right. runner. He's, he's like the big build up speed kind of runner. Sure. They got uh, a problem. Obviously. Maybe it's maybe he'll Lamar get a, Jackson. Maybe he'll get another chance. Um, but and, and maybe maybe the scheme isn't great for him, but uh, and maybe it's not a fair chance, but. It's just it's really just gone downhill, you know, week after week for the most part with with Jalen Hurts, and it's regardless of whose fault it is, um, it's not it's not helping Devonta Smith out at all. Mm-mm. Um, so, all right, well, should we go to one eight? Yeah, one. That's me. Man, am I excited to make this pick? This is why Dynasty is the shit. I'm going Elijah Mitchell. Look at that man. <laughs> Just having a year. Only he's only played five games, averaging thirteen point seven points a game. It's good for nineteenth. He has four hundred and thirty three rushing yards. That's good for fifteenth. Only played five games. Averaging five point three. He's evaded twenty two tackles. He's tied for tenth in breakaway runs with five. That's runs of fifteen yards or more. And eleventh in breakaway rate, which I thought those were pretty good stats to support my argument. Straight facts, keeping it one hundred. Straight facts. My man is just elusive and he looks good every time he catches the ball and i'm not really sure why he only has four receptions on the year because i I think they could throw him to him more but they haven't really entrusted him on third down just yet but he's crushing first and second down he's made trey sermon who obsolete just not even gonna touch this uh first or second round probably with trey sermon um that's how far the, the the graces have fallen which you heard it here to avoid Trey Sermon in the first round of your rookie draft. So you're welcome for that. We didn't have Elijah Mitchell in the first round, but we were hot and heavy on Elijah Mitchell. Elijah Mitchell's in our name, in our mouths a lot this offseason. We like the eval. At first, we didn't necessarily like the landing spot because of the crowdedness. But how can you be mad when a when an offensive mind you respect and sought after, you seek after those players that he has, how can you be mad when he likes the guy that you like? Right. And so, yes, they took Sermon earlier, but then they took Elijah. And then all offseason, it was like, Elijah's better, but he never got the chance in the preseason because he was hurt. And still, and then he came in in the preseason and had a couple of fuck-ups, and they stuck with him. And now... Sermon's not even touching the ball. And if Elijah's healthy, he's getting all of the early down work. And 
you know, has some touchdowns, has a bunch of, you know, breakaway runs and just just looks awesome, man. And, and yeah. I want the guy who's going to lead this backfield. And, you know, maybe Monster comes back. Jeff Wilson's coming. Well, Monster's out for the year, but Jeff Wilson's going to probably come back. They got Hasty back. You see him in on third down. You know, I'm not saying that it's he's going to win you your league this year. He certainly could. But he's shown enough to be like, damn. I need this running back for the for the 49ers. Yeah, and I hope you emptied your fab on him. And anybody who was telling you that you were dumb for emptying your fab on him is dumb. Um, <laughs> You're so, dumb. Uh, dude looks really explosive. Uh, I will I will say that I, I'm kind of mixed on this. Part of me thinks, obviously, if you drafted him this year and your team's competitive, you know, do you ride it out? Let's see what happens. Part of me thinks that maybe you you cash out on Elijah Mitchell what? Um, just just because the volatility of of the San Francisco backfield like I don't know what's going to happen when Jeff Wilson comes back maybe he doesn't come back 100 percent we've seen you know that that position basically be cursed you come back for a minute sure out again sure um, Elijah Mitchell's been kind of in and out again like you said Jay Wayne hasn't even had the full complement of an offseason and and being around for every game and I think you know, you haven't even seen maybe the full Elijah Mitchell experience yet. And additionally, obviously, Jimmy Garoppolo is still in there playing ball for them. And so, you know, you're hoping that when Trey Lance gets in, in there, you see a whole other uh, dynamic in the run game uh, really open up. As, as But I don't want him to come in right run. now. So, this is not a fucking help, Trey Lance discussion. To help. Just, I, I don't like, even want to Jimmy's say his name. Jimmy's helping Elijah I, right now because that ball's moving. Like, yes. Lance will help stretch to the Casey's defense, point. The, rushing. the last three years, the running backs for the 49ers have been the most injured of any running backs in the league. Well, of, of all the teams, so that's a true stat. That's their whole team. I, I do want a Niners running back. It just seems like you got him for nothing. And if maybe if you're not competing, that maybe if you could cash out for a first plus, that I would on on Elijah Mitchell. I can um, see that. Maybe not everywhere. And if, if I'm comp- not a, like, not being, a me and Jay Wayne have a team that's in first place in a $150 league with a $50 um, real money pot that you have to for, for waivers. Um, and so you know, at the end of the day, it's basically a $200 league. And, you know, I'm going to ride the fuck out of Elijah Mitchell and I'm not trading him. Like, we're, sure. gonna, we're just going to ride out. And I'm not um, trading Elijah Mitchell to the team to seven and one. And it's going to definitely be in the. At least the top four for the championship, you know. Late first. I'm not going. I'm not going to throw them to the wolves for the late first. But if I got a gamble, if I give them, to, hey, this team right here kind of sucks, but they think they're three and five, and they think they, they can think make. They think they're the best. They dancers. think they can do it. All right, if I can get a chance for a one four or one three next year. In almost any other scenario, if a running back that I really like like this comes out, Pops? takes it takes a hold of something, I'm pretty much trade. never trading it. Right, right. Disagree. Um, but I just, I, I just don't know what the fuck is gonna what Kyle's gonna do how this is gonna go if he you know maybe trey sermon figures something out and starts mixing in and for some reason mitchell's not really getting a ton of volume in the passing game maybe jeff will i'd be interested to see what happens when jeff wilson comes back because they definitely like jeff wilson he's been a stud Um, when he plays hadn't played a lot but every time he does it's 30 (laughs) you had a lot of shit had to happen for mitchell to get here yeah um Right, but so I just wonder is, what happens moving forward and in the off season. And Kyle hasn't really stuck with any one guy, whether it was injuries or not. Um, the reason that I was so hot and heavy on Elijah was because he was the cheapest 49ers running back. Right, um, and now he's becoming a really expensive, he's the 49ers most valuable running, right. running back. Um, right now. So, he but completely he's earned block. that. I'm not, I'm not Trey saying Sermon that he has never it. earned that, and he was given but everything. The draft capital gave it to him, and that was obvious. You don't, you can't. Over, you can't have a guy who gets drafted four rounds later, three and a half rounds later, be more valuable before they play a game together. You yeah, can't. I, I mean, that I, was I obvious. Just, I wasn't once you took Trey Sermon in the first round, like I just I wasn't sold on that because of this whole scenario right now that we're talking about. That I'm like, maybe I want to sell Elijah Mitchell. That's the whole reason why I didn't want to take Trey Sermon there because I'm yeah. like, wow, this is a lot to pay for uh, such an uncertain deal in San Francisco. Yeah. Um, and and that this wasn't I like the talent of him and if he would have stayed in the second round then I would have been all over Trey Sermon there was no way I was touching him in the first round but I was touching Elijah Mitchell everywhere and it, it looks looks good right now I have no idea why Trey Sermon isn't on the field and can't like there's you telling me that this guy can't get on well, the field well we don't like, Ayuk can barely get a target well, either we you don't see that coming you see around that, though you know touchdown coming around, touchdown coming around. 
targeted a couple times in the last game, had a touchdown ripped out of his hands, got the two point conversion. Uh, you know, come on, I it's coming come on. around, starting to come yeah. back around. So yeah. anyway, that's my uh, that's my two cents on Elijah Mitchell. I I, I don't even like saying to, to sell him because I'm usually not I never that kind saw of guy, that coming, man. You like a guy in the evaluation period. He goes to a team you like. He gets his opportunity. He pops. This is dynasty. I'm holding. Mm, you can sell. Not just, I mean, that's the whole point. Yeah, I mean, I told it's you not, when I, but you don't, you, you never sell. I told never you never sell anybody you like. I told you when, why. And sometimes it works out. I told you why and when I would sell. I, I sell I people I like all the time, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's just a difference in opinion. Yeah. It's I, a different strategy. I'm giving you the whole gambit of of how I could see the Elijah Mitchell thing. I've never I'm seen giving Jay, myself props I, for being like I fucking told you so, and then I'm also giving you props where you could play it like Jay this. Wayne trade away somebody he likes. Like I just I don't I've never seen it happen. Jay yeah. Wayne does not trade away anybody he likes, so that's fine. That's right. why Jay's going to fight you on that. He ain't trade nobody. Right, and I'm, I'm not, not trading Elijah Mitchell. I'm I mean, not I trying. Guess I'll I'll trade guys. I mean, I make I make trades, but like. You, if I you like spend a guy, draft picks and buy players, but you don't trade. You don't trade. That's fair. You buy players with your draft picks. You don't trade. You don't or trade. I move up draft picks. Anybody that you like picks. Yeah, like I, I use. I move next next year's first to right. move up and get pits. Yeah. Right, as you should if you're competitive. Like you should you should use those picks to try to win money. Like you mm-hmm. should. Um, you know, but uh, again, I'm not going to recap everything I just said with Elijah Mitchell. But all right, it's not. Next pick. It's not like I'm just being like, yeah, definitely sell him because like I, I, <laughs> I, I laid out before, I laid yeah. out the whole thing of the sell it before house, the value but. drops. Uh, so <laughs> all right, who's up next? I'm up next. Yeah, pick you nine. Are. I'm gonna take Kadarius Tony. Kadarius. Uh, obviously has strong hasn't, pick. Hasn't been on the field a whole lot. Was a, a two times, two games. You showed us everything we needed. A to A big see. fan of his coming in uh, was all over taking him after you know in that high second to mid second. Let me get all the Tony I could. I did get all the Tony I could. Um, and the reason I've got him so highly elevated here is I don't need to even see all that much more. I just he just needs to be on the field because when he was on the fucking field. He looked different than everybody else on the field. Just shut him down for the so, year, Giants. Like, like, what are we doing? Just there's look. a bunch of other guys on here who may end up be better, may up be more consistent, may have a better head on their shoulders because that's part of the deal with Kadarius of why that you know that he was maybe back a little further because uh, the only thing that's going to hold him back is him um, and maybe some injuries, but we shall see. Uh, but when he's been on the field, fucking Glennon thrown to him or Daniel Jones thrown to him, not worried about the quarterback situation moving forward or who the else the rest of the fucking Giants receivers are. Yes, that be. motherfucker is on the field. He has looked different. So right. and we're it doesn't in a matter who's draft. guarding him, whether it's, Take him. Whether Take it's him. Diggs or... Right. He, he, got, he, he cooked Diggs a couple times and... Uh, d- d- didn't really matter, and I'm just gonna. If, if you're gonna give me a, the choice of all these other guys, the Rondells, the Terrace, the Carters, the Batemans, the Elijah Moores, like fuck it, you gambling. Get, let me get Kadarius Tony because of the little bit the that I saw looked. At, it's not, and Rondell Moore's little bit that I've seen has looked ridiculous. It just doesn't like Kadarius. Just looks like he could be the the man on a team where right. I don't know look, if that ever is going to be necessarily Rondell Moore and the mm-hmm. offense needs to be designed for Rondell Moore to really shine mm-hmm. and I'm not taking anything away from Rondell Moore right I'm Love just saying Rondell Canarius just Tony seems... just look like I'm just what, wherever you need me to be and whatever you need me to do I'm a win watch this shit I like it you can't touch him he's you can't guard him I don't know what the separation stats are, but I don't need to see them because you can just watch the game. Didn't matter. And when he decides to go in a certain direction, he's there before the other people are there. It's just simple. There are going to be three guys around him, and he takes one cut, and he's beat them all. Yeah. It's incredible. Sometimes, and then the yak is amazing, too. Like sometimes Gettleman's going to Gettleman, and sometimes Gettleman's going to Gettleman. Right. Gosh. Well, let's, uh, let's take this opportunity for me to throw out my number one line. If you're still watching or listening, you're obviously knee deep in dynasty fantasy football and you can't get enough of the good meat and potatoes. Maybe there's some Kadarius Tony owners out there that aren't really paying attention. Uh, you know, he has shined, but he's also been the Giants offense will help anybody not shine these days. So it's a, you know, if Casey and Jay have a, mid first round value on this guy at this point and somebody got him in the back of the second round 
uh, and you are a contending team and you can kind of – your your late first-round pick next year would be a, um, a bonus per se – then maybe, and I'm not saying you need to use the first, but you're if you're that type of team. Maybe you I can would. Put, maybe you can put a couple twos together. I'm not. He it, might not play the rest of the season. I don't that's even what care. I'm saying. <laughs> you know, like you put a couple, maybe put a two and a three together for Tony and start there. I wouldn't go just go firing off a first round pick next year for him because you don't want to go blow your cover. Ask for the two that's back the, at least. You can't. You don't want to start with the first. Cause you, yeah. You, you don't want to just set that. I love him. Value. Right. 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 I gotta have him. <laughs> So you just – and maybe you don't even – what I would do is try to ask the guy for his Amari Cooper first. You don't even – you just pick Kadarius Tony off his team and you just go and make a dry offer like that. Then all of a sudden it's values up anyway. Try to get the you, better guy and then move right. back to Tony. Yeah, you're, you're settling like, well, right, for, for Tony. Tony. I, I've already you, – you try to go after, you know, this bet, Hopkins and then, you know, somebody else. And then you're like, all right, well, what do you want for Tony? I'm trying to make a move here. I'm itching. And you got to play it down. You're not going after Tony. You're settling for Tony. All What's right. this guy? Kade- Kadidrius Tooney? Yeah. <laughs> I never heard of him, but I, you know, I think I might be. That's even better. Misspell his name. <laughs> Misspell his name in a text. You Will Tunchi? Right. Okay. Can I get Tony? Can I get Tooney? The young joker. All right. Who's next? Big Co's up. I'm up. 110. 110. All right. So at this point in the draft, I got my eyes on somebody, right? But I don't want to blow my cover, and uh, not necessarily. I mean, this is a mock draft, and none of you is. I really just wanted to see how far you guys would let this guy fall. So I took Rondell Moore because there's nothing wrong with that. Like you just said, the offense. If if if, if Rondell there are Moore, three R's in his name too. By the way, if in case you were wondering, Moore or right. Or, if or. he's in as good a spot as he could be without being like a teacher's pet. Right, like the the Cardinals, they play with the pace that could, even though he might not be the number one target on the team, can get plenty of targets. Right now, their targets are just completely spread out all over the place. Right. So, and he is a rookie, and you know things are, you know, that's Kingsbury's not exactly gotten, you know, he's maybe too much love at some points and sometimes, and he maybe gotten a little bit. Uh, hey, you're doing great, but he hadn't really been doing great, you know, kind yeah. of thing. But now this this year has been magic happening for the team. So, you know, Rondell Moore looks fantastic when the ball's headed his way. It's just how often is it going to head his way? Um, and I mean, he's got to like I said, they play with the pace. It's just the, the balls they're dispersing it right wildly right now all over the they're field. Up, up at the top of the league if not the top of the league with four receivers and they're kind of more into the cliff Berry air raid kind of deal going on right now and, and kyler's capable of getting it done and chase is good out of the backfield as a good receiver and ronda like they just kind of have a lot of parts and pieces that and it's when they're winning so right, they, and right, they don't care they right. don't need to force it right. to anything like if anything, they could probably throw it to Hopkins a few more times if they wouldn't just open him up right. on a go well, route. And then you have that guy. A, like, yeah, you, you, know. you know. So, yeah, I, no, just, I, I, I went with Rondell here. Certainly is, a great pick. Again, you know, this is that time. We, we, he, was a, he was either the 110 in your draft or fell all the way to the 2-3 in your draft. Like, that was kind of the, that pocket there of some of these wide receivers and a, and a running back or two, maybe a tight end snuck in, depending on how you were wanted to play it. Quarterbacks were obviously hot and heavy in the back of the first round this year. Um, so, you know, Frondell Moore, to me, I wouldn't I, – I, if nothing else, stock up just because you you've seen him do it. Mm-hmm. No stock down because he's not getting the targets because his team is there and they're winning ball games. Right. Yeah, I mean that's if he if he was getting the volume and and having an offense built around him if he was with Shanahan, uh, if he's in, in a place Debo of Debo, role, yeah. Uh, yeah, he'd be fucking way up here at right. one four, right? Uh, because Debo he's role. got the talent, he's got the ability, um, but it's just are they going to cater and and really help him be max potential or is it going to be he's going to be pretty good and there's going to be flashy games, but maybe he's never quite like. Just absolutely slaying week in, week out. I agree. But he could be. Yeah. I like the pick. I think could be if they want him to be. It does right. seem it does seem like he might need to be gimmicky 
gimmickly schemed the ball a lot, you know, but I think there's still room for improvement. And I mean, He's a once you do get the ball in his hands, it's like that meme where it was like, this is Rondell Moore with the ball in his hands. And it was like a duck and they dropped it into the, into the water and it just shot. It was just gone. Mm-hmm. And you know, you feel the electricity building when the ball's in his hands and to see him take what he did in his freshman year of college Translate that to his rookie year of the NFL because right. that was really the only sample that we had of, of Rondale because of injuries. This. Yeah, and to see that, you know, to see that eighteen-year-old freshman who was squatting five hundred pounds or six hundred pounds come into the NFL three years later and just you know look look the part. It's a good pick. I don't I don't know who you were really wanting to pick, but this was. This is the better pick. <laughs> can't, can't go wrong. Can't go wrong there. I, li- I like the Rondell Moore pick and, and could definitely ascend into, into greatness. All right. All right, Jay Wayne. One more. Well, no, two more picks. Like one, What do you so got? I'm at 111 here. Man, I had a tough time with this one. I didn't. There's, there's several players that I, I couldn't argue with you if you took it. Uh, but I just went ahead and stuck with my eval on this one. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Terrace Marshall. Uh, hasn't had the greatest rookie year so far. I mean, if you if best you just, preseason ever. If you took his preseason, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I just I don't know exactly what's going on. I mean, DJ Moore's been pretty solid. It's it's trending down. Carolina in general hasn't quite gotten it all together. You know, it doesn't help to to have CMC out. Sam Darnold at times looks good, at times looks terrible. He's dealing with injuries. Robbie Anderson, no show. Don't know what to say about can't that. Catch. I mean, he's and been getting targets all of a sudden again, but can't convert any of them. Put a zero up last week for you, so that that was a huge bummer. And 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 I just I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but Terrace is going to be there long term, and Robbie won't. And I don't know. They they seem like they want to upgrade that quarterback position, and they're going to put in. You know they're gonna do what they need to do, so I feel pretty decent about that. And I, I, I think I still like Terrace Marshall long term. I'm still my evaluation was that he's this you know fluid guy who's nasty after the catch. He can make plays deep downfield because he does have d- some deep speed, and he's nasty in the contested catch area. And and you saw all that in the preseason. You were like, damn, yeah, like I need to. Oh, the stock way up, Terrace Marshall, in the preseason. In the preseason, you could have turned him for double what you paid for him mm-hmm. if you already had a rookie draft. Mm-hmm. Right. No doubt about it. Um, but I just, you know, there's there's a couple more good picks here that they're deserving of, of the of the first round pick. But uh I just I'm gonna stick with the guy I had high on my highest on my board left yeah. pre draft and uh and go with Terrace Marshall. I like the eval. I like the the coaching staff and the people around him making the decisions to draft him. Um, and then I like the owner situation who's going to be aggressive and try to figure out the quarterback. Already and make said this that. Team. Yep. He's uh, already said it. He's like, yeah. we're not, we're, we're going to be right. hot and heavy. And this, they made an aggressive slash smart and efficient, like not really paying too much chance gamble on, on, on Darnold. You know, mm-hmm. they gave up a two, and if they're like, all right, if we're going to be a decent team, it's not like we're going to give up 2-1 over here. And if he's good, it's going to be a later two. And if he's bad, we took our chance because mm-hmm. we we had to do something. This was a number one overall pick kind of guy. We had to go check to check this guy out. Um, so, I mean, I think he went two behind Baker Mayfield. You know, yeah. he's probably he was supposed to be the first overall pick that year. Um, uh, it was good, aggressive play by the Panthers to try him out. And – you know, like Jay said, it's just been sometimes he looks fantastic, sometimes he looks terrible. And that can be that can happen to a lot of quarterbacks if you're not the top, top guys. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, even in I mean, in any given play, the best players in the world can look horrible. I mean, you know, you see a player two from Patrick Mahomes this year is like, what in the world are you doing? But then this next play is like, oh, he's Patrick Mahomes again. Yeah. You know, it's just like Sam Darnold terrible offensive line and ha- hasn't ever gotten this team wasn't supposed to be right. good anytime yeah. soon you right. know we uh, we talked about that earlier in the year they went all defense last year in the draft two years ago in the draft because they just need to completely retool and then this year you know making some moves they were 
They were they overplayed the first couple of weeks. They got your expect. They got they they, well, the they got your hopes good up, and and they had some bat some good defense was favorable matchups. Right, had the favorable matchups. The defense they had these exotic blitzes that nobody was ready for, and they just caught some people by surprise. And mm-hmm. it's a long long season, and, uh, and of course Christian McCaffrey, and of course your best player's not playing. Um, and when your offense is kind of built through that, you know DJ Moore was hot and heavy first couple of weeks. It's like Sam Darnold's favorite target times ten. As you know, now Buckus, now Not nothing. Terry, I, I less than ten though. Still, so. st- all the teams that I have Marshall on, which are plenty, thankfully, I still feel good. You don't feel as good as you did by week four of the preseason, week three of the preseason, because that was you just you had a starter you, on your. Well, you thought you had an every week starter, right? On your, and you well, you thought you could have somebody you could basically sell for two first round picks now. Yeah, you know, you're like I don't, but it was so fun. You didn't want to sell it. Yeah, FFPC time right now with the smaller rosters kind of sucks with them, but anything with a bigger roster, I'm super stoked about it. And uh, I'm buying Terrace Marshall right. if I can. Yeah, I mean, I got him on two FFPC teams that uh, he just sits on my bench, and it, it does suck to have more a couple players like that, but at least when you see it's Terrace Marshall, you don't get that bummed about it. It's not like a complete bust. You know, he's just not the team. He, he was never going to be, you know, the – Alpha, alpha right this the year. The, yeah. it, you knew that he was just playing. So it was just so. That's what that's what happens in the playoffs. I mean, in the preseason, you get a chance to see a guy like Marshall be the alpha because it is preseason and DJ Moore's not playing. Boom! Look how good he is. Right. And now it's like, all right, well, he's they're not, he's not getting those yeah force fed targets because it's not preseason anymore. But you still got an asset. It's just not right now. It's just not all time high value. By Terrace Marshall, faux show. All right, last pick of round one. It's me. Toss up between Bateman and Michael Carter here. Haven't got to see a lot of Bateman, and I've, Carter's been getting better and better as it goes on. Bateman's been fine in the, in the first couple games. Sure. You worry about Bateman a little bit with the Ravens and how consistently he can see the volume that he might need to see to be great, but maybe he does become a favorite of Lamar's. It seems like him and Hollywood kind of have something, and you can get a big play there, and then there's Mark Andrews. How much more room is there to be right. really great week in, week out uh, in that offense? To be TBD, Lamar keeps getting better, and, and maybe Bateman's just what the doctor ordered there. Uh, we've seen Sammy you know, be pretty effective in this offense, um, and, and Bateman could probably get you 10, 12 a game. Um, and, and, and if he scores a touchdown or breaks one off, even better. And uh, maybe he becomes the guy that, that he likes more than Hollywood Brown. Um, but I went with the running back here. Michael Carter keeps getting better and better. The snap uh, percentage keeps going up and up. We went from 25% week one, and now we're up to 72, 70% week uh, seven and eight here. He basically worked his way from third or fourth on the depth chart to one. Uh, he looks he looks like he's continuing to get better. I don't know if he's ever going to be – he's never going to be a lone guy out there absolutely slaying it, but he no. can be a 1A. But what you and, saw last week with the nine receptions – Right. We, you know that could be a possibility. This offensive line is something that they're going to continue to invest in. It's what Joe Douglas believes in. They have Becton, who's been out, who's one of the best in the league. They mm-hmm. should be getting him back soon. They, they have Vera Tucker on there, and they're going to com- keep building from the inside out. That's what, that's what the, the GM believes in, and I, I, I believe in him. Um, and they've been making efforts to, to make that happen. Um, not sure if they got the quarterback right, but that'll, that'll – you know, it's going to take some time. Oh, well, they might have got the second one right. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I I like what I'm seeing from Carter. Like I said, you get that offensive line back. They're gonna they're 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 gonna invest in that, and and you got again a a Shanahan disciple with Lafleur in there in his first deal, getting real action, calling plays, figuring the league out uh, week by week here. And if you're gonna give me a running back in in that kind of a system from somebody from that kind of tree. Uh, with this kind of potential talent and he can be the one a in that then you know if the at the back end of the first uh into the top of the second if you can give me a an rb2 here um, mm-hmm. i'm cool with that i like it well i mean this is the guy that i could easily take in two or three spots ahead based on one game last week yeah because of the targets and he's a running back and the you week know, before that he I, had eight i, I love so. terrace marshall terrace marshall's my guy Rondell Moore is about as fun as it gets. And like you said, Tony could be the best player on the field anytime he decides to be. And But when you got a running back who gets targets, it's 
basically as valuable as one of the top five tight ends in premium. You know what I mean? It's hard. It's hard to find a running back who's going to get targets. And if Michael Carter continues to ascend to play all, 70% of the snaps and get good targets. I mean, that's, that's, that's killer in your lineup. That's killer to be able to grab a guy with what you had to pay for him. If he gets there, you know, his first couple of weeks could get nothing. They, you know, I mean, I don't think you're, you're – he had 15 carries and nine catches uh, this last week. That seems like – Love it. It can't be ever any more than either of those. I which, never need more than that you're ever. Never, you're not going to have nine receptions I, I never need him to play better than that ever again in his entire life to be more than valuable than what you're paying for him right there. Like, I, if you can get – 15, I mean, 16, and 5? Bro, that's... <laughs> I don't think he's going to average 15 carries a game in the NFL. I think, like he, I, I think he absolutely can and, and, and may. Like... I think that's, he can't. I, think I that's mean, a one A. I think that's a one A. Obviously, he can. It's a, that's a lot of that is based on what the coaches want you to do and what how they want to do it. That was a high scoring game against a team that was asleep. They probably didn't even watch the first hour of film against the Jets. Mm-hmm. They boys came out the best. It was the best victory the Bengals have had in years. And based on, because they were that took them to like what six and two. Five and two, maybe with a bye. Five, the but lead, like, five, the division, but like, the lead in the. That was the biggest. I mean, they've won big. They've beat good teams because the Bengals beat teams. You, they beat the Steelers every once in a while. We don't think they should or whatever. But they got Burrow back with a from a crooked knee, and all of a sudden he's a he's Burrow again, faster than we thought. Than I really thought he would because his knee went very sideways, and I was very pessimistic about his ability to get back this year and look like Burrow. And the Brown, that's just what the NFL does, man. So the Bengals were as high on life as they could be, they didn't give a shit about playing against the Jets. And it was very obvious. And probably about halftime, they were like, damn, we probably should have done some homework. These yeah. boys, who's Mike White? Is he a rapper? What is going on? <laughs> and then they they get beat, you know? And, but it was, a, it was, they just, if, if the Jets could, the Jets will not play like that. They've Jets might not play like that again the rest of the season. They're, Cause if you, you come out that happened to them twice last year, you come out and you play a game and everybody's like, Oh crap, this team's playing hard. The next week, the next team is like, Hey, we got to actually play. We got to, it's the Jets, but we really got, yeah. did you see what they well, did? They're last coming week? back on Thursday did, this week. Did you see what they did last week? You know, it's the Jets, Yeah. you know? So oh, you can believe that the, that the Colts will be on top of some, on top of some check downs this week. So it's, gonna be a little harder to do to just let everything else happen to just take what they give you this week because they're gonna be on top of hey he's gonna really take what we give him a lot this week right. so it's gonna probably be a quite a different game and it's a high um coming off of a high for the jets and and mike white so you know probably be a little different but i like what i see from 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 carter he looks like a good player he looks like he can be the one a in an offense and agree you know Terrace Marshall long term may be way better for your fantasy team to have on a dynasty. You know, Tony could end up being Tony's that boom bust kind of guy. Bateman still love Bateman. Obviously, I was very bummed where Bateman went. Um, like Casey just said, though, uh, Lamar's taking it to another level, and there's a lot of stats going around right now about his first half of the season versus the second half of his strength of schedule going against the pass defenses that are going to be lower, and they've been a lot better in the neutral pass rate for the Ravens than anybody ever expected. So Bateman could really have a good yeah, well, back. Yeah, I no fucking running backs left. <laughs> True. True. Good point. Now, way to put the logic to it, <laughs> the logic to the numbers and read behind the curtain. But Bateman could have a very good, strong second half to his rookie season. That's what you want to see out of your rookies. But the gamble on a running back is, again, you know, that's what you do sometimes. You're like, all right, well, there's just so many wide receivers. It's like, all right, would I trade? If you send me Michael Carter right now for my Terrace Marshall, my trade, and you probably not. But I'd love to go buy Michael Carter right now from somebody somehow. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I could have taken Michael Carter. I, I wasn't sure. Uh, I I, I, can't, I probably could. I, I probably didn't. can't send you Terrace Marshall for Michael Carter. Yeah. But I could have taken Michael right. Carter three picks ago, just for the gamble of what could happen because he's a running back. But once I got my guy, is yeah. I just talked about it, t- trying to buy um, Javante Williams or Travis Etienne. You know, it's like Terrace Marshall's my guy. Mm-hmm. I picked him. And, you know, it just means something to you. Obviously, I, you know, I got 12 dynasty leagues or whatever. So, like, it waters down. Sure. So, I don't have to play it like that. But it's still, it's harder to send away the guy, 
You know, if just one to one, they're out there and you're grabbing, hey, I can get Michael Carter now. Maybe I can trade back up. Maybe I can get Terrace Marshall. Maybe I got three picks in a row. You know, it's right. whatever. Right, right. But like one to one, yeah, maybe I'll still take Marshall. But Michael Carter is one hell of a shot in the dark right now because if this team plays anywhere close to that, he's. He's a, yeah, if he comes out, he'd be a fantastic RB. Not great on, on Thursday night here and then had some bad games in the beginning, a couple of good games. Maybe somebody's like, oh, I'll cash out on him. So. Love it. All right. All right. Well, let's get out of here. We've spent long enough. I knew we would only get one round. There That's is a fine. second round, and, and maybe we'll get round. that for you, but uh, maybe not. So. Yeah, well, appreciate y'all joining us. If you're listening on the podcast, please hit us with a five-star review on the iTunes. Because I have to pee right now real bad. I got to pee so bad. <laughs> I almost left a minute ago. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought about it, but it, I was like, we got two picks left. Uh, <laughs> I almost left a minute ago. If you're watching on the YouTubes, hit me with that subby. Appreciate y'all. We'll see you next time. Peace.